you know, I, I've thought so much. I, I didn't realize it would be so difficult to, to, to try and think what is it about Vanessa, mum, you know, her earlier roles, Charge of the Light Brigade, Mary Queen of Scots, Isadora. Um, I mean, besides her staggering beauty and, as Ray said, sensuality, um, I was thinking it, it, it's sort of a, a purity of spirit that, that, that they're very rarely seen as though sitting in the audience you can actually feel her skin pulsating or as Martin Sherman said you, you can feel the heat coming off her skin or my father described it as um, her emotional flow her total commitment and when I finally got to work with mum I realized that she was more present in her work than she often is in real life and I thought, ah, oh, that's where she lives. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, another quality that I, I feel she has, um, <clears throat> my opinion, is, is, is that she sort of seems to break this invisible barrier between audience member and celluloid. Um, I got an email last week from a friend. It said, searing performance about Vanessa in Rafe's film Coriolanus. Um, you know, it, it, it just, the truth sears. And actually, there's a moment in Camelot, which, Mum, you didn't tell this story, so it, it's just a little family thing, that actually y you said how much you loved it, but that actually when you were offered it, you didn't want to do it, and you turned it down. You wanted to carry on making films like Morgan and Blow Up, and, and it was my father that said, no, Vanessa, you're going to do Camelot. And, um, you know, when I watch it, um, there's a moment in that, talking about searing truth, is that uh, within the background of this huge 60s uh, musical, as we saw, um, Arthur and Guinevere saying goodbye to each other, and Guinevere's off to a nunnery. And um, she says that it, it, in the past she's looked in his face for forgiveness and hopes that she will see it again, but uh, that she won't be there to see it and it's really heartbreaking you know again one of those moments um that are, is all about truth and funnily enough i i asked mum about uh if she ever thought of an alternative career uh what that might be and and she said a nun <coughs> um, <laughs> before science pushed her in another direction <laughs> But, you know, still, what is it? What is the power of, of mum when she's at her very best? And, you know, she does extensive research on placing the character in historical context and very Stanislavski-based. But, you know, whereas I feel most of us may be speaking for myself as actors, you know, we draw on observation, psychological makeup and intent. When I look at mum's work, it's as though she's drawing on the elements. You know, she taps into this this thing that um, you know was called Jung's collective unconscious, so that so that when we see her weep as a character, it's not it's not just the character sadness we feel, but as Rafe said, a sort of universal sadness. And similarly, uh, my daughter Daisy, um, Vanessa's eldest grandchild, went to a music festival Coachella last summer, and. Um, at the end, the, the hot ticket, this band, Arcade Fire, got up to play. And suddenly, as their backdrop, they had Vanessa in that clip we saw earlier singing, It's May, It's May. And so 50 years on, I, I feel the power of that clip is that she can somehow embody this collective joy. The critic Bernard Levin um, wrote of you uh, as Rosalind, um, quoting Shakespeare, and echoed in my father's autobiography. Um, and Tony continued, uh, and at the center of it was this great golden flame, so light, so fluid, so involving. It made me think, Mom, of what you said to me, that you quoted Ellen Terry, that all you ever wanted to be was a useful actress, and I, I think we all agree you're very useful.